For years, the government has been borrowing from the World Bank to fund projects in the education, health and infrastructure sectors, among others with particular conditions set by the donor World Bank that are usually open for negotiation with Uganda. Now, these are new, new conditions that they brought on us uh, following the passing of the anti-homosexual uh, uh, bill by, by the Parliament of Uganda. Now, the, but this, uh, this is uh, uh, an act of Parliament that was passed democratically by the Parliament of Uganda using the very principles that the World Bank always calls for. The State Minister for Foreign Affairs believes there's a group of people hiding behind the World Bank's directive. And let me tell you, it is not the World Bank that is that has passed this law. It is that those behind the World Bank, the cowards, the cowards who do not want to come out openly and tell us that we are cutting aid to you, we are putting sanctions on you, these are the cowards who are who put pressure on the World Bank to, to do this. So the idea is to break Uganda in order for other countries not to, what, not to follow suit. So let's make an example out of Uganda in order for uh, others not to follow suit. While many believe that the matter is already covered by existing laws and there have been concerns as to why the World Bank acted in the aftermath of the Anti-Homosexuality Act of 2023, which introduced heavy penalties for offenders, the state minister believes that this law was necessary. The, the LBGT group have, uh, have taken advantage of the challenge, some of the challenges that our people have in terms of areas where there's poverty, areas where uh, individuals have short income, to come in full force to fund the advo advocacy and the promotion of homosexuality within our community. There is evidence of how they even gave teacher, some teachers in some places money over and above their salary to, to, to teach our children uh, alternative lifestyles. The directive which will affect aid to Uganda's planned future projects and not any ongoing ones, Uganda has other alternatives to look at for funding. Uh, let us uh, not overblow uh, the impact of what the World Bank is uh, or World Bank withdrawing. We, we, as a government, we have many alternatives. Mm. We have, we, for example, we can uh, we have friends out there we, uh, who we can go and seek uh, uh, alternative assistance and alternative interventions to some of the projects where, that actually need to stimulate this economy. Because mm. what we need is is money to stimulate the economy rather than money for for, for consumption. Okay. Number two, we need to cut down on wastages. If we can cut down on wastages, we'll be doing very well. It reveals that the high-level negotiations are currently ongoing between government and the World Bank intended to end all differences in the matter. Uh, as friends, we'll overcome uh, this, this and continue work, working as normal. Mm -hmm. But the engagement is continuing. The engagement is at, at the level of the presidency is going on and the engagement at the technical level with the Minister of Finance is going on. In an online statement to Ugandans regarding the World Bank Group Directive halting funding of future projects, President Museveni said Uganda will develop with or without loans.